I had this sense of like, I'm out here alive on earth, like might as well just try. It's just a giant mental game, you know? And it's like just you against yourself. Hello, my fellow Martians. My name is Harry Mars, and this is the On Mars Pod, where we take a deep dive into creative professionals, entrepreneurs, and other inspiring Martians alike. That might be some of legitimately the fondest memories I have in my whole life. It's awesome, you know, and sometimes you get, you're so close to the project or you're so in your own shit, you're so in it that you can't like take a sec to realize, yo, I have friends, I have a sick life. Just letting yourself be at peace and understanding like how much energy you have, how much you can do, and then feeling good about what you've done. Hello, my fellow Martians. Today on Mars, we are joined by a video director, business owner, and a former musician. Everybody welcome, Esteban Obregon. Thank you for being here today, brother. Thanks for having me, bro. Of Great course. to be here. Thank you so much, man. So on Mars, we take a deep dive into creative professionals, entrepreneurs, and other inspiring Martians alike, as you know. So that's why I'm really stoked to have you on, man, because uh, we've, we've known each other for about five years now. We talked about it the other day. And We've uh, we've worked together on projects, and you know we've talked about our passion projects, and I've seen you grow, you've seen me grow, and it's crazy like how far we've come in these last five years. We were we were saying this uh, off air, and um, so yeah, I'm just stoked to like put a conversation that we would normally have off air on camera. Totally, bro. <laughs> yeah, um, met Harry what like I think almost four years ago now, right? Almost we we're saying four or five years ago. Dude, I think it was like 2018. 2018. Yeah, it was. Uh, I walked into a dispensary, Yep, had a tragic data failure issue with my laptop. I was bumming super hard and I see this fool in the dispensary and I was like, yo, dude, <laughs> it's the worst day ever, bro. And uh, we chopped it up and it's like, do we just become best friends? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think that's what you on the phone. But yeah, yeah man, it's, exactly. it's been a trip. You know, it's like, I feel like you, you have friends that you are always talking about what you're going to do and the goals of how you want to make things happen. And you're one of those people I've always been able to just like riff with and you know, we're pushing each other and it's four years later, look where we are. I mean, we have a lot to go, but it's cool to see us here, you know? For sure, man. No, likewise. And I feel like that was always something that I uh, really appreciated about our friendship that we can have, like, like we can fuck around and, you know, like shoot the shit, but then we could also like have like real conversations and like talk about real life stuff. And it was always uh, uh, enlightening. I feel like every time we hung out, it was never like, it never felt like a, I don't know, like a, I have to go hang out. It was like, oh right. man, like, hell yeah, I get to see Esteban, that type of deal. You know what I'm saying? Totally. Yeah, um, man. It's a blessing to have friends, especially for people who can relate to what you're going through. You know, I feel like in the creative space, a lot of times it's just so unknown and there's so much like, there's no clear path in a lot of this stuff, you know, and having yeah. someone that's like in it with you and you can reflect ideas off of, it makes things, you know, it's sometimes a lonely journey trying to make all this happen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man. Yeah, for sure, bro. Well, let's, uh, let's, I mean, let's kind of get us started, bro. Cause you grew up in Arizona. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's, uh, that's, that's all you knew grow, growing up. What were your passions, dude? What were you outside? I mean, I know it's hot out here. So was that a thing growing up? Like a uh, neighborhood yeah. kid, like dude, neighborhood kid. I was out pretty much all day. I would go see if Brad and Andy who are my across the street neighbors and Logan. Nice. And we were like stealing the fucking the the flag from the golf course we lived like yes. on a golf course not on the course but just in the neighborhood so we were always messing around with the golfers um getting outside and playing sports and stuff and then my dad was an amateur photographer his whole life so he would always give me cameras mm. and he'd be like hey try this check this out and that's kind of how i got my hands on a camera was early on he was just like see what you think about this and uh yeah man grew up in arizona and uh pretty much have been here or was here my whole life and I graduated U of A when I was 22. Once I graduated, I started touring like crazy. So I, I was uh, not born playing the drums, but <laughs> grew up playing the drums and uh, just wanted to give it a go, man. was like, I think this could be something. You know, I think yeah. like I want to just roll the dice. And from about 22 to 26, I um, was playing, touring quite a bit. And then now 
starting this business about four years ago. So yeah, man, and that's kind of just like an overview right there, just like yeah. run down from the beginning. But like uh, I skipped a lot of parts, but <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, there's a lot of things like you still like touched on the key points. You know what I'm saying? That right. kind of make uh, make who you are today. I feel like and kind of your experiences that you've had over the last you know 15, 20 years of your life. Totally. <laughs> but um, but so growing up, you you said your your dad was a uh, photographer. So he was like a film photographer back in the day, or was he yeah. shooting digital at the time? Yeah. So I remember him shooting film. Yeah. I remember we'd go to Costco and nice. we'd like look for our name in the in the film photos. Oh, yes. So he was like shooting. That's how we shot photos when I was like you know eight nine, even younger. Like point and shoot, or like yeah, he had like a Nikon with like uh, okay. you know you just put film in it and yeah yeah we would go to Costco get those developed. That was always fun. Go on trips, don't see any of the photos. Come back, you're like dang, that was cool. Yeah. So memories. that's kind of just my intro to like. Yeah, just seeing images, you're like, dang, this is great. You can actually like freeze time and it can be this beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, he was just like, hey, see if you can take a few photos. And he would just give me his old cameras. And then over time, it was like, you know, when you're in high school, you're making silly videos. And I was the one that kind of had a, a sense of how to use the camera. So I was like, all right, boys, I'll, I'll take the camera. You yeah. know, I'll do that. And then things just kind of slowly started happening. But yeah, that's, that's how it started with my pops. He was just like, yo, here you go. See what's good, dude. So it was kind of like... Um just kind of how we're saying it, it almost sounds like the music and the photography kind of were like in your life at the same time and they kind totally. of wove each other into each other in a way where it's just like, totally. you started out like playing drums. When were you playing drums? Dude, I started when I was 12 and just okay. a little more context about music. I grew up in a very musical household. So my dad, you know, has great taste in music. Thankfully, he was listening to all kinds of stuff. I mean, Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye, Bob yeah. Marley. I mean, the dude has great taste. And so it was just always on there was different vibes for the different days we had pool playlists i mean the dude just nice. had it going i love that so he like music was a huge part of our life and um you know being a cuban family there was always music going and dancing so that just became a part of me and then yeah i like i actually tried to play guitar first and i was like this sucks i suck <laughs> i can't do this um so i went to drums and yeah i was like 12 and just loved it dude it was something that i just like became super addicted to and yeah, man, it's a great thing to be able to do for sure. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm glad that you kind of touched on that because um, that was part of the notes here because we're both Hispanic Latinos. Yes, sir. You got the, yes, Cuba, sir. you have Cuban background. So it's your dad that's a uh, Cuban background. Well, I guess everyone's from Cuba. It's easier to say Cuban because everyone's parents is basically from Cuba. And then they all left Cuba as a result of, you know, all the communist bullshit. Right. My mom's family went to Spain. Okay. And my dad's family went to Mexico. Okay. So, so that's where my, my grandma met my dad's dad. My, yeah, my my grandpa shit so all of your family was born in cuba then except for my dad's dad he was born in mexico dang dude yeah. so yeah it's like you, you're pretty you're like pretty through and through cuban straight like, up yeah everyone's yeah. cuban yeah yeah that's pretty sweet dude um because i feel like uh latino and hispanic heritage is like always really like family based and totally always uh close with each other and um especially in the early days growing up so that was kind of like um something that i kind of wanted to quick touch on before we move on to like music stuff too mm -hmm. like uh those those early days like um do you remember like going to like family parties and seeing like uh you know them playing instruments and uh mm -hmm. like um that type of vibe is that kind of what it was like growing up totally man um every sunday for like as long as i can remember pretty much i'd say up to like high school we'd go to my grandma's house uh varying levels of how the party was going but there was always music i mean every new year's you go to my house or every major holiday you go to one of my family's house that were there there's people dancing and it was just that's always the vibe my uncle has congos and stuff like that um it just makes things better and yeah like you said with the with the cuban and latino kind of upbringing family is, is crucial and also just like being around people and, and having you know your chosen family too is also something that i was like you know like you and the homies that you know i've chose to be a part of my life right it really makes you value these relationships that like you valued as a kid and then you can start to choose the people you want to surround yourself with and so um yeah that's pretty cool. I I like that you said that too, where it's almost like the the values that that were instilled in you as a kid from being in a Cuban household, you were able to like translate that those same values into when you kind of chose your own family out out here um, as you grew up. And I think that's cool because there there definitely is like like a family, like the people that are your friends for years and years and years, they become your family. Totally. So it's like having that, uh, that same value system with those people, the same way that you would treat like your regular family. I think that like 
that kind of speaks a lot about like your character too, because you would treat your friend the same way you would treat like your brother or your sister kind of deal, which I feel like um, that, that always makes for people that like have a lot of friends and people that can like relate to people easily and like make friends easily and um, you know, always have good energy. I feel like that, like those people that grow up with those family values, they have like those like a kindness instilled in them manners. Totally. And um, just being a, a person. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. And it's almost like to to, yeah. to like someone like us, it almost seems like common knowledge. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Totally. But like not everyone grows up like that. And um, so it's really cool to like to like almost relate to you in that sense where it's yep. just like I feel like we almost live parallel lives in a way. Totally, man. Um like except I'm Puerto Rican and you're Cuban. Totally. So it's like, but like I totally. relate to a lot of the stuff you're saying. Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah. Puerto Rico. Dude, I mean, it's it's funny because like not to sidetrack too hard, but I feel like that's kind of the basis of how we all judge each other and relate to people. Not judge, but I guess relate is a better word. Is like based off these values and the character of each other. And like, you know, people that we are the closest to that we can relate the most to oftentimes share a lot of the similar values that we have. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it's just great to see people who are like, cool, that people that are polite and love their family. Not that you don't can say fucking shit and be like a, a degenerate at times, but like just you can tell they have like a sense of how to be a person, you know? And I've always got that from you and you're always someone I could have been able to count on and like, bro, we've done all kinds of shit together. We've worked together. We've gone on trips and like, yeah, man. I mean, it's a trip. It really is a trip. You know, it's funny. Like I, I was thinking like, what a blessing. I, I wanted to tell you the story actually. And again, not to get too sidetracked, but no, on the topic of friends um, yeah, and just like where we are now, I remember I was actually snowboarding at Copper in January and I'm out there like, you know, unloading the car, smoking joint, putting my boots on and like just like looking around and just kind of got this feeling of like dude this is my life you know like i have friends i can do what i want like i'm here and like and we're here doing that's just it's awesome you know and sometimes yeah. if you get you're so close to the project or you're so in your own shit you're so in it that you can't like take a sec to realize yo i have friends i have a sick life you know like i'm i think there's a cheesy quote that says like remember when you remember when you have or what how does it go like remember when you wanted what you have now or some shit like that and you just forget because you're constantly wanting the next thing. But bro, friends and family and all that stuff is just, yeah, it's a blessing. Absolutely, dude. And it's almost like uh, it reminds you to like, um, like practice like grace and like, uh, you know, like what you're thankful for. And like, remember that like not everyone is blessed with the same life that you are given and that you have kind of made for yourself in a way. Because um, it's like it also is obviously like like you you made decisions to put yourself where you're at so it's like you have to also like remember to like give yourself flowers in that way where it's just like totally. not, not only like remember that like you're in a crazy position and like this is like wild you're living an awesome life and not everyone can live this life but like to zoom out and like really remember like how far you've come and Dude. to like see the journey and like 100 percent remember where you were at five years ago when you were just like struggling you know what i'm saying and maybe totally, like man. mentally in the wrong place and now you're just like Loving life at the top of a mountain, smoking a joint, having a good time, hanging out with friends, you know, like yeah. living somewhere else. Like, and that's just like, that's so exciting. And it's like, those are like the the memories that like, uh, like they're like adult core memories. Mm -hmm. Cause you, you make a lot of core memories as a kid. Yeah. But you make a lot of core memories as an adult. They just seem to be maybe spaced out a little bit more. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like every 10 years. <laughs> yeah. And things kind of maybe like lose their gravity because you're just so consumed in everything. You're like, oh, yeah. this isn't the special thing and then you have to like you said zoom out you're like damn actually that was super special you know yeah, like exactly. i actually have a pretty i'm doing all right you know yeah man and because it's so easy especially like in these uh, creative worlds that we're in it's like it's so easy to get down on yourself yeah. it's so easy to feel like like lesser or like uh not nothing's as skilled working out. nothing's working out <laughs> yeah like it, just kind of like yeah. when things are on the low but it's just like just like anything it's just like that as long as you keep going totally it'll be like that as long as you keep going if you don't do anything it's gonna stay going down <laughs> but it's like it'll never have the opportunity to come back up mm -hmm. but it's just like kind of being able to like remember all those times when it's just like you were you were in it you know what i'm saying thinking this is gonna be so bad and then it's just like pulling yourself out of it and it's like doing that time and time again it almost like calluses you and we're like you just kind of go through the motions and then just like maybe even lose the passion sometimes right um so it's like to be able to have those moments where you zoom out and just like think about all that and like kind of 
pat yourself on the back. You totally, know, like, bro. be like, man, you're really so out necessary. here doing it, man. Yeah. It's just like, dude, and so you necessary. got people around you that love you. It's just like remembering all that stuff. It's just like practicing grace. It's just, it's a beautiful thing. It's like, it reminds you to be just like, um, yeah, like thankful for what you got. That's 100%, all it is, dude. man. 100%. Um, so yeah, to kind of tie back, uh, we were we were talking about uh, like early life and um, mm -hmm. music in the Cuban household. Um, but so now we can kind of start dialing in on on music because that was like huge part of your life, dude. Yeah, I mean, huge just, part like, of my life. Even like uh, like as a kid, but then later on, like you know, you went on to tour, but like mm -hmm. you were in that band for like eight years. Yeah, like, you, you you started something like Seduction. Mm -hmm. um, when did you start that band? Well, I didn't start the band. I was with a group of friends but it was started in uh man we were 18 i think or no but we you were, were in the first like yeah, first creation totally. of it. i mean yeah, yeah okay, i don't want to yeah. say like, it was my idea yeah, you know? no, no. <laughs> this was a band it was like yeah. a three-piece right yeah it, was, yeah it started off actually so we were we were sophomores in high school okay <laughs> funny enough and um yeah we had one of the our english teachers was like hey i know you guys play music you guys should get the band back together so to speak and play this thing it was called a uh, friday night lights it was just like a you know thing they did after football games and so we were uh, four acoustic guitars and one djembe. <laughs> nice. I, I played drums before, but I was like, I'm going to make my reprise as a guitarist. I'm coming back. <laughs> Fuck the drums, dude. I'm a fucking born and bred guitarist. Anyway, so that was like the first time we all like got together and put the name on it, you know, whatever. So then. So you called it something like Seduction yeah, even then? I remember specifically, we we're sitting at the bleachers in soccer and it was like me, Joe Hallway, Connor, someone else. And we were like, something like, oh, something like. And we, someone kept riddling off words. To who said seduction still is unbeknownst to this day. Everyone claims it was them. <laughs> yeah, of course. It was me, but. <laughs> <laughs> it's an urban kidding. legend. I actually, I actually don't think it was me, but someone was like, something like seduction. And then since that moment, it was like, oh shit, that's a great name. And so, you know, high school, we went through it. Um, just playing like random little high school shows and then went into college. And that's kind of where we started to take it more seriously. Yeah. We got a practice space in Tucson. Um, it was me, Connor Shea, Tyler Cunningham, Nick Gello, and how to dude, a fucking awesome time playing shows in college. Got to open for tons of bands like in the scene, a reg reggae scene, like yeah. you know, Ration, all the reggae bands. And kind of came to this point where we were like, hey, you know, do we want to do this? Is this something that we want to try and actually like go after after college? And uh, yeah, man, it, I was just like, why not? You know, like let, let's roll the dice. Like I, I just wanted, to, I had this sense of like, I'm out here alive on earth. Like might as well just try and just see what we can do, you know? Um, and so after college, we toured for four years, pretty much until I was about 26 and a half. Mm. Um, we were touring for about six months out of the year, six months off. I was managing the band, doing all the booking, um, and then also doing all the content. And that's kind of how I got a lot of my chops in the video space was just making a fuck ton of content, like for four years on the road. Um, and it was, dude, it was incredible, man. I was on the road with, uh, you know, at the time Nick w took a job with, uh, Apple actually as a software engineer because he's a straight up genius <laughs> and uh Connor Tyler and I just sent it man and just gave it our absolute all and it was yeah dude it was incredible you know it was awesome yeah man I mean I kind of want to like talk about the tour experience a little bit too because like doing it for that long for that many months out of the year that's like you can you know talk about it and kind of be nonchalant about it but that's like that that's a tough thing to do and it's like uh, yeah. especially when you're not like I mean, I hate to say it, but like making a lot of money off of Oh yeah, of it. we were playing, let's get it straight here for people listening, bar venue scenes, like playing at like brew. I mean, we weren't like touring. Eventually we got connections and we started to open for shows and got more like, you know, connections, but we weren't on like proper tours. So yeah, dude, it was a fucking grind. Yeah, but like you're doing these shows with like almost like no um, like guarantee that mm -hmm. you're going to get like thousands and thousands of dollars. You're doing totally. this because you love it and like for the chance of maybe you know something popping off and that that's like doing it for the love and like you guys were like really in it and it's like you pushed through like did it for that many years like some people they'll go on one tour if it doesn't go right never go on tour again stop making music altogether right or like do shows like one year and then if it like nothing pops off then they're like ah that was a lot of work right so it's like you guys really saw it through like yeah man i mean it was a uh, there was this period where it felt like you're just fucking living the dream, you know, cause you're just like 23, you're touring, you're out there partying and having a great time. We were making money, like not like us, the the band was paying for the tours and we, we could pay for the albums after the, yeah. the tours. Cause we were making anywhere from three buck, 300 bucks for three hours, mm -hmm. three bucks. We're making three bucks, <laughs> 300 bucks for three hours to sometimes making 
seven fifty, a thousand for like certain, you know, summer concert series, whatever yeah. it was. So we were able to sustain the tours. But yeah, man, I mean, really what what touring did for us was it made us like just fucking born and bred musicians. We just got out there and played five nights a week, right. three hours a night, bro. Just got this crazy synergy with with all of us, you know, and it was uh, yeah, it feels like you're living the dream. And then, you know, it just kind of starts to get to this place where you know, touring is hard. You're not like, you, you really don't like see these cities. You know, it's not this yeah. thing where it's like, oh, you're like on tour. It's like, you're out there grinding. You're driving 80% of the time. Um, but what it really did was it, it showed me a lot of like, A, how to run a business on the, on the back end of things, which we can get into later. But um, I think the most important thing that like it's taken me the longest time to realize, because um, I was so jaded, to be honest with you, about like, you know, you, you're told if you just believe in things and you try as hard as you can and you fucking just give it your all, which I was, I was just, you, you saw me, bro. I was in it and, uh, and it doesn't work out. You know, like it came to a head where we were like, Hey, what's going to happen here? There was a few different factors at play, but, um, just coming to terms with like something that just doesn't work out yeah. that you like wanted to fucking just, ah, that's all I wanted was, it was like the most important lesson I could have ever learned. And it just like, I think added a lot to my character as who I am and just gave me like, I just guess more perspective, you know, it just took me so long to like actually see the lesson in that. Cause I was like, man, fuck, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, all in all, it was just a beautiful, beautiful experience um, with a lot of hard times and a lot of beautiful times. Um, but 100% has like added to who I am as, as Esteban today that you see, you know? Yeah. And I still have a lot to go obviously, but like, that's a huge part of who I am, you know, for sure. 100% dude. And during that process, you honed in on a bunch of different skills and you, you obviously totally. became a better musician. You became closer with these guys. So there was like, that was, those were your brothers really. Yep. So it's like, and they still are your friends today. Straight up um, my best friends. I mean, I was, there's yeah. So it's yeah. like, it's cool that like that experience did more than just like, like it was more than what it just what it was because it's just like it was um there was layers to it that like you were taking things from that experience that you're able to then translate into your mm -hmm. next phase of 100%. life and that was like everything happens for a reason obviously so it's just like not only did you have fun while you were doing it you guys made like at least a little money to like take care of the expenses maybe if you didn't make anything it's all good because you guys had such a great experience you learned so much you were able to like say that you went out there and did that shit. and it's like you didn't half ass it so and it's just like that's something to be proud of mm -hmm. all, all in all even if at the end of the day you guys didn't continue it on forever and ever and ever it's totally like, everything has its time so but it's cool though like there was a time where you you were talking about where you were uh, making content for the band mm -hmm. and like um almost using those other skills in photography, videography, that eye, that creative eye uh, for marketing material. So it yep. allowed you to kind of hone in on those skills, on the editing, on the uh, creating like skits and shorts and totally. promotional material for for music. Ultimately, um, storytelling is what I was learning how to do. Yeah. Just tell stories in multiple capacities. Exactly, yeah. without even thinking about it. Totally. You were just doing it because like, oh, what would be fun to see? What would be right. funny? What would be like a cool way to say this or what, like show this or whatever mm -hmm. on camera without mm -hmm. thinking like, what is the story? Mm -hmm. And so it, that's almost like cooler that like you, you were just doing it for the love and at the same time, like learning techniques in filmmaking. Totally, man. I mean, it was <laughs> it was effortless. We were just out there yeah. touring. And so like you just point the camera and it's like we're just in some new place and Carter and Tyler, just silly motherfuckers, you know. Um, so, yeah, man, it was great. I feel like I learned so much about just what I do now in terms of like you're saying the actual technical side of filmmaking, you know, like how to take right good pictures and where's, you know, just so much because you're just constantly shooting. We, I mean, I was literally the one that was making all of the content you see on on SLS, yeah. except for we actually took a couple friends on tour with us. Uh, my friend Dylan, great photographer, but mm -hmm. the majority of what you saw, um, I was making. So I just learned at a rapid pace. I just did things so many times, and that added to 100% to who I am today or the skills I have. But I'd say the most important thing I learned was just like the the, the back end of of running a business and like you know initially when. Again, I was booking all the shows. So initially right. when I was booking all these shows, I would try and book these nationwide tours and it almost felt impossible. You know, I would yeah. reach out to all these people and essentially what is cold calling, right? Just cold calling promoters and venues and just not getting hit up. But then a year and a half later, having a network of promoters and people around the event, around the country where I could book a nationwide tour in like two days because people would answer my calls. Yeah. And so that just showed me like how to build a network and how to stay organized and how to follow up and how to 
you know, reach out to people who don't know you. Just so many things that I didn't know would, <clears throat> would, you know, be things that I use now every day in business, um, which is cool. Like you said, it just adds like these things that you just are doing that add the collective pie of who you are. Um, it was hard for me to like look back on that experience, like I said, for a while because I like I was just like jaded as fuck. Um, but the, it's those things are at work behind the scenes, whether or not you want them to be like it, you're you're, be, you're being formed, right? Like chipping away without me acknowledging it. But now I can see it more clearly, so to speak, you know, if Absolutely. that makes sense. I don't know. If no, it 100 percent does. It's almost like the uh, the sparks um, to who you ended up becoming. Totally. Like those that's kind of like what that is in a way. Dude, another huge part. I just want to add this. Like, honestly, this is something that I I just had like a really clear uh, remembering of it, honestly, was bro, we'd go to these places and um, people would come up to us afterwards at times and at a bar, people are kind of wasted. And it wasn't like fans, but it was more people that were like, man, you guys are out here doing it. You know, you're following your dreams. And like, I could see it in their fucking eyes, bro. Like they just gave up on some shit. This happened almost every night. You know, just someone who was like, here's these kids are like 24. And like, I just didn't do that. And bro, I swear to you, I just like vowed in a, on a deep level to never feel like that i think that's also again why I like try so hard because i just never want to feel like that bro I'll be at a bar and just be like damn <laughs> looking at like oh, the no, local dude. artists like <laughs> you gave you never gave up on your dreams yeah, and you're just like oh, i gave up on mine that's just it's tough you dude know? for sure so, but and it, that was like yeah imprinted on my fucking soul you like, know it's sh- crazy that like that like that's almost like a an adult core memory like we we're saying dude, where it's just yeah. like that was like a turning point for you like well don't want to be that guy and it's just like and that's something that like can stay with you forever but like in that experience of going on tour and doing the damn thing you showed like it showed you people that aren't doing it see it as like a wow you know what I'm saying? Like, they're just amazed that, like, you can, like, just, like, because it takes a certain type of person. Totally. It's I not mean, for everybody. And I was, I'm not better yeah. or worse than any of those people. Like, I might have been a bigger degenerate than them. I just fucking going out and drinking and, you know, whatever. But yeah. what it is is that everyone's just, like, the reflection of what of, of a version of ourselves. And I was like, this is us not doing this yeah. in 30 years. Right. Like, and, right it, and it's right, just, like, right. cool. I can learn from this person, this this reflection that I'm being offered, so to speak. It doesn't mean anyone's better or worse. It's just like, damn, that's a potential reality. And I was just like, I can't, I don't know. I can't live in that reality. For you sure. Know, it's not, it's a, it. Exactly. And I like that you said that where it's almost not saying like, I'm better than you because I'm pursuing my dreams. It's just like, I, this is a lot of work and I like really don't want to lose this feeling that I'm having now and be like, have that feeling because I could see if I like gave up on my dreams, I might turn into that person or oh, feel like that guaranteed, person. Guaranteed, bro. So it's just like, that's, and that's like, not even, I don't know, I guess it's, uh, you're thinking about like, like your own life, but that's like, it's almost like life gives you examples of other people for you to learn from. 100%. Dude. And I like, I always believed that. And it's like, pe- there people put, people are put in your life to show you things and teach you things. And even if they don't teach you directly, if they teach you indirectly by action or words, then that's like that's a way that they taught you. And that 100%. was what that was. It's just people like Dude. teaching you about yourself in random bars. <laughs> Bro, pay attention out there. For sure. <laughs> Lessons just riddled around our lives. Exactly. You know? They're just sprinkled in there and we just like, phew. Yeah. Like, we don't even like absorb them until later on. For real. On a podcast when we're talking yeah, about it's it. Like, oh, fuck. That dude. one time <laughs> I was at this bar. <laughs> hey, Martians, real quick. I appreciate you taking the time to listen or watch wherever you are in the world. Over the last few months, the Martian family has grown so much. I could not be more thankful for all of my guests and every single one of you who continue to tune in every single week. Subscribers, ratings, likes, and comments all help us grow here on Mars. And it would mean the world. If you haven't already, please go to onmarspod.com slash subscribe to subscribe on YouTube. Like and leave a comment. Rate us on Spotify. All this good stuff helps keep the engine running to inspire Martians all over the world. P.S. Follow us on Instagram at OnMarsPod. Okay, let's get back to it. So uh, we're talking about like going on tour and being surrounded by, you know, your bros and having a great time. Um, So I kind of want to talk about that, like the importance of being surrounded by passionate, driven individuals, because at one point you were living in that like house space. Yeah. Um, yeah, Chaz was living in the house. Corey was there. The island. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, You're living with Connor. Yep. Um, So it's just like it was a real like 
collective of like positive creative energy dude um, the greatest time ever right that might be some of legitimately the fondest memories i have in my whole life in that time oh my frame. god dude yeah. just like especially because you know that right after it, that period of my life was right after the band ended so bro just the biggest identity crisis of all of our like the three of our lives like man we thought we were going to be these musicians i had this whole idea what i was going to do and everything just comes into question so it was just like this really a lot of inner turmoil so to speak so we went to the island and it was beautiful because we, we went to this space where there was a bunch of musicians all living in the same space and then COVID hit yeah. so bro we literally i don't think i've ever made more music in my life i mean it was like the classic people just like walking into people's houses you know Corey just like you want to make some shit today and man that was shit was so fun dude it yeah. was so cool and like to to add to what you're saying and to agree with what you're saying about being surrounded by just great people dude i mean it's it's everything bro it's like you know without great people and without friends like you know i feel like it would just be a really sad existence and you know i i'm just so thankful to have people that trust me and that i can trust and that you know it's awesome it's like it's almost like you can't put a word to it it's like just this feeling of like oh man like i, I have this thing you know that's like so cool you know yeah, which is so great which is just people to be surrounded by that are that are awesome for you know? sure and it's like they're great people but they're also like creative people so mm -hmm. they're like inspiring you to create they're inspiring you to make yourself better and like you're making each other better by like working together on totally. like that that uh for the love vibe because mm -hmm. that's what it was you know what i'm saying it's like it's not like you're using each other to try to get up right. on each other you're not trying to like just like get paid by each other you know what i'm saying it's totally like, bro it was just yeah. like for the love like you were saying it's like open door policies it's like it, and you were literally like if people don't like understand what we're talking about like it was literally like a it's like a fourplex there was like four Dude. places in yeah. this one it was a u-shape surrounding yeah. a pool surrounding a pool five units yeah and we would just all it was like a commune yeah <laughs> so, yeah so it was like a like an apartment but it's just like all homies and they had like their one own floor like, yeah one, yeah so it's like yeah it was so cool i went over there a few times and just every time i went over there it's just always great energy because everyone was always around too they're always hanging out there was like well, that to fucking go. <laughs> you know? yeah i mean in covid too that's yeah. that's cool that you guys were able to kind of like have that space to kind of like totally. hang out uh, without having to like be super like uh i guess was it quarantined yeah it was like if someone's gonna get it at the island we're all getting yeah, this shit, exactly <laughs> like, we're all going down yeah <laughs> But uh, that's so cool that you were able to like have those people around you because it's like um, Corey and Chaz, they're in the Hourglass yep. Cats. Mm -hmm. So it's just like you guys were all musicians and yep. it's like talented musicians in the same genre. It's it was like, awesome, dude. It's so cool, dude. It's like, it was really fun, yeah, man. It's and like then the just, dream. dude, as a result of that too, it was like photographers and different people just coming in, like, yeah. not to capture us, but just like, hey, let's create together. And it just creates this like, everyone's being elevated everyone's skills are being elevated everyone's like challenging each other without even knowing you know like oh shit that was sick dude <laughs> i gotta make something sick now you know yeah um yeah really cool really fond memories of that time in my life man someone just sent me a picture uh of, of like all of us hanging out at the house and i was like oh my god dude <laughs> <laughs> send me back bro. nostalgic Fuck. bro yeah nostalgic. man it's like it feels like it was so long ago that like i was going over to that crib i know dude um, it's crazy but it wasn't that long ago which is i mean nuts. yeah maybe three years ago yeah like, two yeah i mean years ago exactly like, like 2020 2021 yeah um so yeah it was like yeah two three years ago but it just feels like so much longer i know uh, and it also feels like you were living there longer than I lived you there for were. two years. Yeah, two years. But yeah. I feel like that's not that long. You know, no, like, but COVID just slowed time down. Yeah, I think that's like what it fucking was. Time warp. And yeah, <laughs> for sure. It felt like fucking five years for sure. Yeah. Like, um, but yeah, dude, I uh, I love that. It's like um, those those type of relationships keep you going. You know what I'm saying? Because totally. if you were surrounded by people that were just like mundane netflix watchers that just oh, went man. to their nine to five job and then came home watched netflix and fell asleep with their dogs like yeah cool everyone like not to hate on anyone that does that but it's just like to be around the energy that's like almost the exact opposite of that like the staying up till fucking two in the morning just because you guys are fucking doing mushrooms and making some cool shit like <laughs> that Whoa, we never of... did that <laughs> uh, i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> never uh, <laughs> not me sir uh but it's just like that type of vibe like that's like the creative energy that yeah. creates like legends it's you know awesome, what i'm saying dude. and it's i don't know like long term like i feel like that's who ends up like 
doing this shit forever. You know what I mean? Like right. people that like surround themselves with those people and like intentionally because you guys totally. did that with intention. You moved into each other like knowing you guys are all musicians and creatives. And to add to what you're saying too, I think like a really important important part of that is just doing shit for fun. Yeah. Like you were saying, it was it was like for the love. It wasn't like, hey, we're you know we're making these tracks and this is like how much you own of this track and whatever. It was just like you just got to remember that because you know creating turning our passions into our jobs obviously at times shit just becomes a job and so that was a great reminder of just like this is just fun dude this yeah. is just purely we're just being kids you know straight up so yeah man yeah so that's uh that was you were saying like the end of something like seduction but mm -hmm. the beginning of your solo music you were making Tavon music <laughs> which was dope and you still have monthly listeners on that shit, dude. Um, so you definitely should come back to it sometime. Um, I definitely am. I'm definitely going to come back. And I think like when I will come back is uh, when I get a house. I want to have like an actual, because I'm a drummer, obviously. I want to have an actual drum set. I want to have a like an actual, I like having my hands on the instruments. I feel like that was kind of my, I just started to not like to just be producing on the computer. And so I feel like eventually I'll come back to it. But yeah, man, I was making my own tracks and shit. I thought I was going to be Tavon for a while. <laughs> hey, man, you were Tavon for a while. I mean, bro. shit. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Just like learning how to produce. And I feel like in general, with creativity, um, when you get better at one thing, you get better at another. And so I didn't realize that by getting better at mixing music, I was going to get better at like coloring because there's just like these kind of similarities. I'll give an example. Um, mixing music, for example, right? You have your highs, your mids, and your lows. When you're coloring, you have your highlights, your midtones and your shadows mm. and you want your highlights to be crispy but not clipping right this is on coloring and the same thing with your highs and music you want your highs to be nice and crispy but not shrill and the same thing kind of relates to the midtones i won't go through everything but it's interesting yeah. how you can just see these similarities of things and how the overall uh i guess puzzle comes together and i was like oh shit i didn't realize i would get better at this thing by doing this thing but in the same way that when you become when you uh, play more guitar you become a better bassist because you know where the space sits and when you you know become a better drummer you become a better pianist because you know where the space you know it's just it's cool i didn't realize that's like how shit works but i was like okay yeah i see this you it's, know that's i feel like that's a thing in your life where like you almost like cross things like your passions and like there's like parallels in like the things that you do um so that's just like another example right there where it's just like the video and the music because it's just like the video and the music that's been it since you were a kid, you know, what I'm and saying? sports, a lot of sports. But you yeah, okay. played soccer, we didn't like really fucking talk about crazy, yeah, and I was but, always just like being a, just jumping off of stuff. Like, yeah, so you were you super know. active on top of being creative. Totally, yeah. just out there running around like a crazy person all the time. I love that. trying to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but it's so cool though. It's just like how things kind of like like you said, like uh, almost like they reflect each other like mm -hmm. in a way where it's like totally. the music is the same, the mixing is the same as like coloring, mm -hmm. um, but. Yeah, so so you went into like solo music and um, and then after that, like, when was it that you started to realize like, okay, like I wanna I wanna go in on the video stuff because I remember it was it was when you were living at uh, at the at the island. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good question, man. Um, you know, it was just the question of like, what am I gonna do with my life? To be honest with you, bro, like, I when I was younger, I was like, man, I want to be in front of the camera. You know, like I want to be obviously you're young a star. yeah you know and um that just kind of changed you know and and i just was like all right what skills do i have what do i want to do with my life like what kind of things are non-negotiables for me in terms of like what do i need to be doing and it had to be something creative like i couldn't be just doing other things that didn't include this part of me that it just it, it i'll die literally without it you know yeah or if i'm not feeding it and so like I said, I had been creating content since I was a kid, you know, just like for fun and just taking pictures and then into high school and then into college and then after college. And so I had these skills. And as like being someone with a camera, eventually someone's like, hey, can you take some pictures for me for like 50 bucks? So I was always kind of doing these like odd side jobs, like randomly or whatever. Someone was like, hey, you can do this thing. And then I was like, dude, this is actually kind of cool. And then like, I actually really enjoy this. And I started to get better and better and better at it. And then I was just like, I had to commit to something. So I just went in on it. And I, you know, when I was about 27 or so, started just freelancing super hard um, and just trying to get on all kinds of different sets and just like learn about being a DP cinematographer and also a lot of editing as well. Um, a lot of people gave me some great opportunities. Shout out Robbie, Echo Coffee. He was one of the first, my first retainer clients that kind of helped me get started. Um, and yeah, man, things have just kind of 
grown since then. Eventually I started Stabian Films because I, I just knew there was a, a route to go in terms of like, or a choice to make. Do I want to be a freelance cinematographer kind of DP type guy or do I want to own a production company and kind of assume more risk but be able to make more money? <clears throat> and I was like, cool, I think I have the personality for this and I yeah. always wanted to own businesses. And yeah, that's kind of how, that's the short version of that. Yeah. Yeah, man. And it's like being able to use the uh, the knowledge that you had from running uh, and managing um, something like seduction. That was that's why that decision to be able to switch it into instead of just doing as freelance as Esteban Obregon. It's like, no, I'm Esteban, but I work for my own production company, Stay Ben Films. Totally. So it's like that mindset of like making it a company like that's uh, it wasn't as scary to you because it's like, oh, I've managed. I've managed things before. If I want to do it legit, this is how I got to do it. So it was just, it was almost like a no brainer for you. It seemed like. Yeah. I mean, in a way, I think it was uh, obviously scary. I just think, I don't know. It, it just felt like the next thing. I was for just sure. like, I can't go get like a regular job because I'm just going to do a terrible job for this person. Um, so I need to go do my own thing. And I know that like I can work hard when I care, you know, and, um, I don't think starting a business was as scary as so much like, you know, just owning the business after you start it where it's like, oh God, now I got to go out and make the money and Running then I got to fulfill yeah. the orders and <laughs> yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. It's funny. It's like the uh, idea of starting it is like always like flashing lights and then it's just like so exciting. And then like when you get into the nitty gritty, when it's actually running and operating, then it's just like you're feeling the pressure and you're getting right. in those hot water situations like, ah, oh, fuck, why am I doing this? Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> it's just like big mistake. No, because I love it. It's like that's it always comes back to because you love it, man. It's yeah. like because you love what you do and you don't want to like quit this life to go settle for a life that you know that you would hate. And that's really what it boils down to. It's just like anybody that like works for themselves, like they are doing that so that way they don't have to work for anybody else. Totally. And I'm also just trying to roll the fucking dice, dude. Like we're out here on earth, we get one shot. And yeah. we're all going to die for sure. There's yeah. no escaping that. That's, and so it's yeah. like, I'm out here trying to play the game, dude. Like, let's see what's good. Let's try and make a bunch of money. I'm not yeah. like trying to be a freaking billionaire or whatever, but like, I'm going to try real hard. <laughs> you yeah, know, I'm going sure, to try real hard to see how far I can go, but also like not hate my life and work like a maniac, you know, but. Yeah, dude. And well, I feel like it takes like certain types of people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, like people like our, like us that like have that, that, passion and that desire to be a better version of themselves be in a better position like it's hard work and like you have to make decisions to like start your own company put in the time put yourself out there book clients and like make that shit happen and like a lot of people that hear that all that goes into it they're like ah you know what i'm just gonna work I'm just going to I'm just going to get this job. they they offered me 60k a year. I'm just going to take that. My wife's got a baby on the way. You yeah, know what bro. I'm saying? Like and it's Which just is, like yeah. by all means it's like Which your is life cool is too, your life and you it's know? like you, that is that's cool. Like I mean that's like a good a good life whatever if like that's what you want. Right. But it's just like for you that's not what you want right now. You totally. know it's like you don't you don't want to settle for a 9 to 5 for 60k a year for no, the rest no. of your life and then settle down with the wife and kids right now, you know what I'm saying? No. It's just like off of 60k. Yeah. Like that type of deal. Like you want to be able to build yourself up so that way when you're ready to start your own family, you can set up generational wealth. Totally. And I think that's like something especially like kind of tying back to like Hispanic households like a lot of us did not come from that type of generational wealth mm, yeah um, no certainly not because it's like uh, you know i hate to say it a lot of the families that started in america they have that generational wealth because of investments that were done in the past because money passed down for generation to generation so it's just like but when you come from these poorer countries like your family just doesn't have that money and like yeah. a lot of people don't even go to college you know and it's like, it's like yeah. so we're like anomalies in our heritage uh it felt like uh mm -hmm. growing up i feel like uh like having dreams of like being 18 and having dreams of like being a professional creative mm -hmm. that was like so far out of like the realm of like possibility when it comes to like what my parents thought could be pro probably Dude, possible you know what i'm saying totally my parents told me i couldn't do it that's wild yeah that was a, another big part of who i was too i mean I'll, uh, one second yeah, I love my parents to death. You know, like I, I'm again, I'm not knocking them, but they 
like you said, you know, came from other countries and they had to like build their own, their lives off of nothing. And so they are both engineers and they've built, you know, we're not wealthy, but they're de- we're definitely not like, where's our next meal coming from? And so I was just like, when I was in college, I was like, dang, like, I think I want to do this thing. You know, I was like, I, you know, think I might want to try and start like a record label and be a musician and, and make films on the road and stuff. And they were just like, man, that doesn't really happen for people. Like you got to get really lucky, you know, and all this stuff. And that like made me want to do it even more. And that was a huge thing for me was I had to like, not like defy my parents, but kind of go against what they were telling me to do at a very young age. You know, they were, they were supportive. They said, all right, you can live at the house. We're not going to give you shit. There's a bed, but like figure it out, dude. And yeah, it was, that that was a big thing of like, all right, I have to motivate myself. I have to be my own cheerleader. Again, they weren't like putting me down, but um, yeah, that was a real trip for sure. And it was, it's also been really cool to see them, to have them see me start this business and then feel that support from them. At the end of the day, what it comes down to is they wanted the best life for their son. That's all. They knew that this was, you know, a difficult endeavor and they were right. Like not that people shouldn't try to do music, that everyone should fucking try anything they want. But uh, I understand where they were coming from. You know, I, maybe if I had kids, I would frame it in a different way. But ultimately, that having to like kind of F you to my parents type thing, you know, just like, yo, I'm going to do this. I think was, again, a big part of like, all right, I don't really need much external motivation for these things. Like, it's just, it's present, you know, in, t- in here. Yeah. It's kind I'm, of a high thought, but. Dude, Whoa, I'm, dude. <laughs> t- what, no, dude, I, I want to say, dude, I feel like that, that shows very strong character um, on your end. I think. I um, appreciate that. I mean, it definitely took me a while to be like, you know, I'm like, fuck this, but yeah. Because well, to be young, your parents' validation is some, everything is everything yeah so you know even though it came from a place of love that's got to be tough to hear oh from yeah your parents bro. you it know was super so tough. it's I had like a huge argument with my dad one time where i was like yo i'm losing my fucking mind dude yeah like, just get off my back you know but yeah. it was just like this it was this like reaffirmation of like yo on this road of like trying to go against the grain not that again i'm special or anything but it's like I'm not going to really have any cheerleaders, you know, like if I'm telling people like, yo, I'm trying to start these businesses and make a hundred thousand dollars a month. Someone's going to be like, you're out of your fucking mind, dude. And I don't want to hear that from people. And I don't need to hear that from people because I know it's possible, you know? And that's just kind of what that showed me. And like, you know, I don't want to like, again, shit on my parents, but yeah, it was tough for sure. But, uh, dude, who knew it would, it would get me here to be like this kind of just like relentless person. You know, it's like, yo, I'm going, you're either coming or you're not, but I'm fucking going. For you sure, know? man. Well, the, the fact that you took that that almost um, negative energy and flipped it into a positive, I think it, that's the part that kind of like shows your your character where it's just like not being discouraged when other people don't see the vision. Because like like I said earlier, like the, uh, the parents' validation is so important. Like yeah. when you don't get that validation, it's so easy to just give up. And oh it's so God. easy to just also agree with them and just be like, you know what? You're right. Like yeah. maybe I should just try to like settle down and do this or whatever because of their fears and because of how they grew up. And it's like um you really have to like be sure about yourself mm-hmm. and you have to be very confident and like have that like uh um that inner drive to make this chick work well i didn't have it initially but like that but that was (laughs) but that was something that like it could have gone one of two ways totally it could have either turned you completely off and you could have been like well now i gotta go work at mcdonald's right but what it did for you that's what put the battery in your back Mm -hmm. for you to be like oh you said i can't oh you think i can't right watch me right and i didn't know what i was gonna do i just knew i couldn't do this other stuff you know, I was like, because I had I had jobs cold calling for my uncle. I mean, I had all kinds of jobs. I was working at call centers, washing di- like I've worked regular jobs, you know. And I was just knew, like in my soul, I was like, I can't do these things, but I care a lot about these things. I just like, you know, it, it was just like I had I had no clear path. I didn't have like that feeling of like, oh, I'm so sure of myself. This is gonna work out. I was just like, not that, <laughs> definitely this, um, but not in like a ignorant way it was like i know it's going to be i have to work hard i'm not just like i'm just going to decide to do this thing <laughs> i'm just going to be there i don't know why i turned into a country guy there but um <laughs> all right now we're in a texas podcast <laughs> um but yeah you know what i'm saying man i mean i appreciate you acknowledging that though it definitely um yeah 
you know, it's it's interesting looking back on that now for sure. Yeah, it's it's part of who you ended up becoming, man. And I think it ended up like being for the better that that like because maybe if they were supportive, maybe you wouldn't have had like as much drive to like uh like maybe you would have just taken it for granted almost. Right. And maybe like just kind of like taking the pat on the back, like, oh, thank you. I guess I am pretty cool. Ha ha ha. And it's <laughs> yeah. like not really like push yourself very hard. Yeah, yeah. But like because it was like almost coming from a place of like doubt. Right. That energy of just like, I'll show you type of shit. Yeah. And then like, and again, like <laughs> not to, not to talk shit anything on Esteban's parents because they love him very much and he loves them yeah, and they the are best. very close. They're and, fucking amazing. But it's yeah. just like, it's very important to understand that the only reason why they were saying these things is because they grew up in a different culture. And totally. like my parents were the same where it's just like, it's not to say like you, like, um, like when you start doing it, then it's just like they're so supportive. Like you said, like they come around and they're like, oh, right. I love this. But it's almost like they're worried about their son. They want it's you to is. like be like, hey, just so like you're aware, like this is kind of a rare thing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really happen for everyone. So why don't you think about these things just in case this dream doesn't work out? You mm -hmm. know, that that type of energy. That's what it was. So it's just like, but it's like uh, to, to have like that... Um, like almost feeling of like these guys really don't support me at all. I feel like that's like so such a strong like negative emotion to like be thrown at you early on in the game for then you to just turn that into like a friggin' burning passion to like make it what it is today. It's like it's so inspirational to like know that that happened because I never knew that 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 was the case. I thought it was just like always super supportive. No, <laughs> but like but now it's turned the corner. You yeah. know, like you're making racks a month. You're living in Colorado by yourself. Well. Still Still, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you got clients. You're booking gigs. Like you're out there doing it. So it's just like they, they really can't like say like, "Hey, Esteban, you should really think about like no, they love getting it, a dude. real job now." It's just like they're, they're so like, fucking so proud. Stoked, and, yeah. I bet. It's like so cool. They would have been super stoked if I made it in music too. It's just at the end of the yeah. day, like, what's the price you have to pay? Like, what kind of person are you going to become? You know. Um, so yeah, man, it, it's it's definitely showed me like, especially now. You know, I think a lot a big part of business is just like. Before I thought it was acquiring new skills. All right, how do I run this new ad? How do I do this, have this new sales tactic to handle this new objection? It's just a giant mental game, you know? And it's like just you against yourself. And then if you're fucking losing that battle, the business is losing, you know? And so, yeah. you know, just for example, turning, it just showed me to turn negative into positive. So for example, trying to get new clients, you know, you're just in a six, eight week dry period. You're stressing. That's not a good feeling. You're like, yeah. oh fuck, you know, like I, this could go really bad, you know? And then you just take that and it's like, just turns into this like laser focus of like, I got to put in time. I got to put in, I got to actually just like input things to get outputs. And it just showed me like, okay, I can take some shit and just like ball it up into something and then put it something somewhere positive, you know? Absolutely. And it's almost like kind of seeing like the problems and just like finding solutions for them as well. Like, like totally. Like, like the problem is you need money. <laughs> like, you need clients. It's like, well, go find clients right. and like figure out what the problem is and solve it. And just like, <laughs> it's kind of like, you're just like trying to like do it like that, where it's like, that's, I feel like the approach where you need, you need to have that drive to like figure it out and like go out there and, and do it. And it's like, otherwise you never, you never will get to the level like where you're working for yourself completely. Right. It's just like, if you don't put yourself out there, you don't give yourself the ability to like get opportunities. Um, totally. But um, yeah, dude, this is this is amazing. <laughs> this is great already. I feel yeah, like we're totally. covering a lot of stuff. Um, so something we didn't talk about, but um, to kind of uh, tie back to the end of like the music stuff mm -hmm. uh, when you were like SLS days. Mm -hmm. um, I remember you telling me that you had um, an issue with was it your wrist? Yeah, nerve injury, really bad yeah. nerve injury. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember at one point you were saying like I can't even really like drum for like so oh like yeah a certain dude. amount of time i did i couldn't even really hold the sticks or with yeah. my left hand at least yeah dude so um i'm a self-taught drummer started playing drums when i was like 12 11 12 something like that and drumming is a repetitive stress or you're prone to repetitive stress injuries when you're drumming because you're just doing the same motion over and over again and over the course of playing drums for yeah i don't know 15 years i would get these shocks from like the middle of my forearm all the way up to my cheek right here and it just got to the place where like eventually it felt like I had like needles in my arms. It was just like terrible, just really bad, like chronic nerve pain. And that was a huge part of why we kind of, you know, stopped. It was also just things coming to a head again. Just what are we going to do with our lives? 
but yeah, that was not fun. That was definitely um, my first experience with like chronic pain, you know, and just being like, just this thing. You're like, is this just kind of how it's gonna be forever? You know, but that was another thing that just showed me a lot of patience and gave my, I had to give myself grace and then just like, you know, trying to take my health a little more seriously. I mean, I try to fucking quit cigarettes like everybody who does nicotine. So can't be able to say I'm a health God, but among all other things that I take my health very seriously. And uh, that was something that was like, I don't know. I've been very blessed with my health. And that was just weird, you know, just having this thing that just doesn't go away. Um, but thankfully, it's, you know, 80%, 85% gone. Um, and I can live a pretty much normal life, you know, thankfully. So, so. did they ever have to, have to like operate or like? No, I mean, no, it's just, it was just like nerve impingement, like in different parts of like my elbow and my neck. And so I don't know if they were trying to like go in there and just fuck a bunch of shit up to like open stuff up. I think it was more just like it needed time. You know, over time, it was going to like loosen up as, as I stopped playing the drums like, uh, with the frequency that I was. Right. I was right. playing seven days a week when I wasn't on tour, but I was practicing every single day and yeah. I had drum lessons. I was going hard. Totally. So, um, yeah, you know, like just like anything, you do it over and over and over again. You, know, you click a mouse too much, you get carpal tunnel. So just a result of that. And yeah, it was kind of a trip, you know, when your body's like, oh, hey, you actually can't go on in, even though you want to, you know, definitely fucking weird. Especially when it's something that like you grew up loving. Yeah. And it's just like, oh yeah. man, like this is, this is what I do. Like it Dude. almost like was a part of who you were really. It's yeah. like defined you in a way uh, to a certain level. It's just like, I'm a drummer. Like 100%. What, what am I? Like it just kind of played, so into, played into that, like that same thing where it's just like, what am I? Like, what am I doing? Like I'm not, yeah. I'm no longer this identity that I like I used to identify with. Totally. Um, that's crazy. Yeah, it was um, a real trip, man. But you know, it's uh, it was a great lesson, though. You know, just like learning how to not hold on to something <clears throat> too tightly. Yeah. You know, like identifying myself as a creative, unless it's like a specific thing, like a drummer. Just I'm just a creative person, and I don't really know if I identify myself as that. But just I just like being creative. I also love business, and I love like sales, and I love all that stuff. So I've always had different sides of me. Um, but yeah, you know, for sure. Man, yeah, I uh. I mean, everything happens for a reason. So it's like it was supposed to happen at that point. Um, but something uh, real quick before we kind of go off the topic of music, uh, there was something that I found out while kind of doing some research, which I thought was kind of fun. Um, back in the day when you were in something like Seduction, you guys would have annual ugly sweater parties. Yeah. That shit was cracking, dude. Dude, talk about him because that like, mean, you guys shit. were like performing and like, like booking bands dude. and shit at the end. I mean, yeah, bro. It was fucking, it was awesome. It would be like, damn near sold out shady park i think like two or three years in a row and it was our end of the year uh show we'd have in phoenix it was our big local show and um yeah it was awesome our last show we did at crescent and nice. i think we almost sold that out too and we would just get all of our friends on the bill and it was typically after like a long tour so we would just be like super honed in and sharp and everything was hitting you know and yeah all of our friends and family would be there and you'd be only time you're nervous was then you know like uh, you go out and play all these shows and you're just like, whatever. And then you go in your mom's and you're like, <gasps> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? right, right. Um, but yeah, it was so much fun, dude. It was really cool to like just feel the local vibes and get all the homies in one place. It worked out really well, too, because it was over Christmas every year. Yeah. And so everybody would be back like from wherever they were visiting their family. Um, so it was like it became like a reunion of sorts. Um, it was great super fun dude it looked it looked cool because i mean like by the time it was like over you guys were on like the fourth annual yeah something like that I think, and i yeah. think i think it was like november of 2020 you guys did the last or something like that something or, like that or, I think. like yeah it was it was in 2020 that's when you guys had the the last yeah. one the fourth annual yeah and uh it almost sounds like that was almost like one of the last like nails in the coffin um was that was that the case? Because it sounded like it kind of nail ended in the coffin. Around, and, and what do you mean? Like where? Because like something like seduction stopped. Oh yeah, making I mean, music. It was just like just everything in that point came to a head. It was like yeah, all right. My body was kind of giving up. Right. You know, we were all just kind of starting to get fed up with just this lack of like what we were getting back from the band. You know, whether it was like success, however we were deeming success at the time. Mm -hmm. And it was like, what are we gonna do? You know, like I just. I don't know. And we were all just like, this doesn't seem like it's going to be something that's going to work out, you know, and what kind of people are we going to become if we just keep doing this thing? Like, are we going to become the best versions of ourselves? Um, so it wasn't like, you know, that show ended or anything in particular ended. It was just like the culmination of 
being in a band and i feel like the main issue that bands face is they just like staying together it's just tough to stay together and and just keep it going bro it's not easy so yeah all positive things bro like i, I mean those guys Absolutely. again are like all my best friends and i have nothing negative to say about that but again yeah i was definitely jaded for a while and I had this huge identity crisis but i think this is who I was meant to become for sure. For 100%. sure. Yeah. And I guess uh, using the term like nail in the coffin might not be the right one. Maybe like the bow on the present. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Where it's just like it put the bow on it. You know? Yeah. Like, okay. Where, I like, see what you're saying. Where now. I'm saying like that yeah. was the last Tied like neatly. hurrah. Yeah. Where it's just yeah. like that last because it sounded like, you know, it ended around COVID. And then it's just yeah. like that last uh, last few months of COVID, you guys did that show. So that that last show was probably really special because yeah. it was just like a, you knew it was ending. You know totally. what I'm saying? Yeah, man. It was definitely really special for sure. I think I, I think actually the last show we did was called the Sonic Oasis uh, show. Okay. Or Sonic Oasis something. And it was in, at Crescent in July. And uh, yeah, dude, good times. I definitely miss being on stage for sure. Um, but, you know, you get you get your fix. Um, I was just shooting Red Rocks last week or like two days ago. So that was pretty sick. Amazing. Got my musical fill there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I only have positive things to, thankfully, I can look back on that experience with uh, positivity now. Absolutely. I mean, it was it was all positive. I mean, it's just like, yeah. it's really, it's like, it was a great experience all in all. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, yeah. Um, but it, it's cool that you were able to experience that in your early 20s, mm -hmm. because it's like, those are experiences like, you wouldn't be able to have that in your mid 30s necessarily because like people right. are in such different places in their lives so like it wouldn't have worked out the same way mm -hmm. if you were like 33 versus 23 yeah um, <laughs> so it's cool that you're able to like do that early because now you have those experiences for the rest of your life and then totally. now it's like when you're 45 you'll be like man that was so cool like when you're talking to connor later on in life yeah. just like yo man remember when we did this and this and that and it's just yeah. like it's not going to be like man, I wish we would have that yeah. type of conversation. It's going to be like the 100%. opposite. It'd be like reminiscing on the great times you had. Yeah. I love that, dude. Yeah, dude. It's always funny talking about it too because like once you get going with stories, then some shit pops up. You're like, oh my God, I forgot about that. Tour stories. Yeah, you're like, that was crazy, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> not as crazy as people probably think. More just like being fools, you know, like definitely not stories about chicks that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> we were not cool like that dude that's for sure <laughs> hey man we're having fun though um so uh uh something i wanted to ask you about is um early on did you have a lot of like comedic influence by way of tv shows or movies because i feel like just i mean we have a lot of conversations and we just laugh our fucking asses yeah. off so it's just like there's just a lot of like like just you just naturally have like a comedic energy to you appreciate that <laughs> yeah for sure it's definitely a compliment <laughs> but it's like does that stem from something like did you grow up like cracking jokes with your sister and family and yeah. like because it just feels like like even like infusing into like the shorts and the skits that you do totally um yeah. they're always like some sort of like comedy element yeah it's so funny man because like you just don't realize like all the things that add to who you are yeah. my dad's a total fucking prankster dude oh, he is okay. like hilarious bro he will straight up one time we were at this cabin bro and we just watched Blair Witch Project and he had this whole elaborate prank where he fucking scared me my sister my two cousins literally half to death it was <laughs> what did he do I don't even remember it was like hey like come outside and like just see this thing and like he pulled us around the corner my uncle was sitting he just totally orchestrated this thing and <laughs> down to like <laughs> down to one time he we were at the cabin and he was like, you want some dessert? And I was like, sure. And he had put, because we had, we had made like uh, Muddy Buddies. What's he put that? a bunch of like a Chex Mix with like powdered sugar. Oh, word, word, and word, so word, yeah. He, he put a bunch of dog food and powdered sugar and he was like, hey, you want some dessert? And he like gave me the plate and I was like, sure. And I reached over. I just munched on a bunch of dog food. Like, I mean, he was, he's always been doing that kind <laughs> of stuff. <laughs> he's, he's, he's absurd, dude he's absurd but uh yeah i mean my uncle's a total jokester my grandpa i mean yeah just you know everyone's always messing around so yes yeah, so that makes sense yeah <laughs> that's cool though so were you like watching like comedy movies was that a big thing yeah like, for sure up, like uh definitely in your, in your household were you guys watching a lot of movies back in the day yeah watching movies um i don't know if i have like a ton of memories of movies like specifically but definitely just like humor and and messing around and always like like my dad just like has jokes like i feel like that's a big latino thing especially in mexican is just like telling jokes and so him and my grandpa and my uncle will just get going bro and it's like 
you can't stop them <laughs> they're just like going and just riffing and yeah it's really funny to be to watch them and it's definitely a huge part of yeah you know you just got to keep things are, light yeah. bro you know for sure i could i can get real serious don't get me wrong <laughs> yeah definitely but it's but, just like uh, it's something yeah. that like i it's i've found that like you do with like intention sometimes like adding in like comedic element totally to things thanks for noticing bro i appreciate it for sure i mean <laughs> yeah i mean yeah definitely it's just uh yeah it's like i just it makes sense like knowing that because yeah. it's just like oh that's just how i grew up <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah dude it's funny i haven't thought about that for a while but i was thinking about just yeah some of the shit my dad's pulled is hilarious dude yeah i have to start right writing some of those down for <laughs> sure remembering because there's some good ones definitely there's definitely some good ones make a little journal um so uh you grew up in arizona and it's yep. funny because like i grew up in michigan got sick of my hometown and left to the desert yeah you grew up in the desert got sick of the desert and left to the snow yes i love it dude <laughs> i'm fucking living out We're there like bro. opposites <laughs> yeah dude i mean it's yeah so i live in denver now yeah live in denver been there for over a year actually it was a year on august 11th shout out denver um happy anniversary yeah <laughs> but it's been great dude like denver i mean i don't want to shit on phoenix bro but it's just different you know it's yeah. just like it's more it's closer there's more community um i also just been here my whole life and i was like i gotta get the fuck out of here and prove to myself that i can do some shit on my own so that was a big part of leaving um yeah man it, it, it's it's it was the best decision i ever made 100 it's been really difficult like not having homies around like just that whole thing you know but that's just the journey bro it's the hero's journey you know like everything everyone has their you're leaving hometown and yeah. everyone's own version of that and i think like I don't know. I just couldn't have gone. I, I can't go through life without that version of it. Just being here forever felt so wrong, yeah. you know, and it really forced me to like step into this new version of myself and like just put all those things together that we've just been talking about, bro. Like all I had an opportunity to just actually supply all these skills and like, it, and it's, I felt like I had my own version of like an overnight success, you know, yeah. like just like, oh, this dude just popped up on the map. Like this artist, like, oh, he's just, where'd he come from? It's like, bro, he's been grinding for 10 years, you know? And I feel like I went to Denver and just like, you know, fucking things just started to work out. But it was more than I just, I had more experiences. I had done these things enough times where I had like a roadmap for how to make things happen, you know? Mm. Um, and it's been nothing but blessings. And it's also been a fucking shit show too, bro. Like my apartment flooded, dude. It was absolutely insane. I had to move out. It was like, yeah, dude. I mean, it's it definitely has to come without its challenges, but yeah, I mean, hundred percent awesome. <laughs> would you say that there's something to be said about um, biting off more than you can chew, so that way you can kind of like show yourself hmm. how far you? Great can question. Go? That's a really good question, bro. Um, yes and no. I'd say yes and no to that. It really depends. I think um, biting off more than you can chew will end up most of the time fucking you. But I think like mentally, physically, like theoretically biting off more than you can chew just like having this goal like yo, i'm going there but believing it i think is is you know you have to like put the stakes high for yourself you know like definitely don't get in a situation where you like bite off literally more than you can chew and you're just overwhelmed but i think yeah just having this like i guess more what you're saying too though and i think to answer your question is like putting myself in a situation where i have to figure it out that's it right there you go so yeah, yeah. totally 100 percent. i've always um loved pressure you know I was that's like, it. i'm going yeah. fifth for the pk like i'll do that like i'd love just that cool oh, shit here's the crunch time so yeah dude totally just like all right sink or swim is really well how many metaphors can we go <laughs> yeah for real it's yeah that's what exactly it's sink or swim dude um <laughs> but, but yeah 100 percent. Put, yes putting totally. putting that pressure on yourself it almost like it makes you like here's another metaphor pressure makes diamonds <laughs> 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 Start listing them off. <laughs> no, yeah. 100%. I'll have a counter on the corner here. Yeah. <laughs> metaphor, metaphor counter. But it's just like, I feel like that's like um, something that I see with a, a lot of people that I've brought on. There's been situations where they almost are put in uh, circumstances where it could have gone one way or the other, yeah. but like they were prepared for it you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so it's almost like biting off more than you can chew when you're ready for it yes okay so i see what you're saying yeah so it's just 100%. like putting yourself like for you like biting off more than you can chew 
diving into the scene of Denver, yeah. barely knowing no anybody, clients, nothing. no I clients where it's just like, where yeah. you were almost, like you said, like thrown into the fire where you have to figure it out. Yeah. Otherwise okay, totally. like you have to come back home. <laughs> so worth like, it. Fucking yeah. do what Harry just said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, bro. That's it. That's just like what it is. You know, uh, I don't know. It's hard to talk about this stuff and not feel like, I don't know. I'm not like, I don't know the words posturing or like, I don't think I'm better than anybody. Cause I think also one thing I wanted to say and add to what you're saying is, no one's better than anybody at the end of the obviously right but i think what it is is it's just suited for different personalities yeah right so like there's people who are super suited to be like a great technician or a great gm that works for someone else making 300 racks a year and they don't own the business because it suits their personality more but like someone like me i'll be a terrible employee i'll just like i have horrible issues with like authority and like i don't listen to people that's not true but <laughs> you know what i'm saying right like you know who i am yeah i wouldn't make a very good employee you know but it's not to say that you can't be an employee and make hella money and just like have a great life, you know? Yeah. And so I think if people are suited for those types of things, they like risks to a certain extent. It's like, cool, dude, throw yourself in the fire. Like you're saying, and just like, because you either, you either got clients and made it happen or I went home to Phoenix. And so like, again, I just, I don't want to feel like anyone thinks I'm saying like, oh, you need to do that to do this or whatever. But it's like, that's a for sure a way to, really test yourself you know and like yeah. see what's good well that and that's it where it's just like the same way and it's like i don't think it comes off at all like i'm better than you at all where okay. it's just like it's almost like showing people that like if you want this life right. you have to be willing to do things like that and take those risks and put these things on yourself where it's just like give yourself that pressure because mm -hmm. if you never do that you're going to stay complacent. You're going right. to kick your feet up. You're going to get comfortable. Some people like that shit, and, but, and that's cool. And by all means, and they right. end up becoming, you know, the GM making 300K. That's right. totally fine with that. And totally. that's like, every each, to each their own. Everyone 100%. has their own story. Everyone has their own desires and yep. passions, whatever. And like, like we were saying earlier, some people like to, would like to just settle down with 60K job and just like work an easy, easy job yeah. to like make just enough money to stay alive and then be cool like then that's totally fine but it's just like that's that but in the same way that like that person can't say like i'm better than you for like having a job while you're out here struggling to like make it you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying mm -hmm. like they can't say they're better than you because you're out here trying to make it you know what i'm saying because they yeah. could they could almost in the same way have that like ego of like, dude, I have a fucking full time job, 60K, and I own a house. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. You know I what I'm saying? That. Where it's just yeah. like, fuck those people, by the way. <laughs> um, but uh, but it's just like we're not talking shit on those people at all. So like they shouldn't be talking shit on people trying to live their dreams because like it's super easy for someone that's like in a comfy, comfy, cozy job to like hate on people trying to make things of themselves. Well, it's I think what's happened is that like entrepreneurship has become like glorified and it's like for some reason like if you aren't working for yourself you're working for someone else's dreams it's like shut up dude <laughs> <laughs> like fucking shut up bro whatever dude yeah you know it's like being an entrepreneur kind of sucks dude yeah it's, it's not all that work. fucking cool but it's a lot. it definitely suits me as a person and again i love it but it's not like oh yeah i own a business and it's just like life is great and also having a job is it's just like dude it all is hard as fuck but for some reason, entrepreneurship has become this thing that's like this whatever. And then it's become like, oh, either you're doing it or you're not. It's like, whatever, bro. You're just doing. You're like, you're just doing whatever feels right for you. And I think at the end of the day, what feels like shit is when you're doing some shit and you know deep in your heart you should be doing something else. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. You know, I think like Realistically, yeah. just no one likes that feeling, whether it's like that's a right. relationship or it's a job or it's it's just like a show, you're whatever. You're like, I don't really want to be doing this. And we all have that feeling of intuition deep down where it's like, you just know. You can't lie to yourself. You For know? sure. And so. it's it's almost like uh like your um like your future outlook. It that's like kind of what you gotta think about. Like like when you're in a mundane job that you hate, it's like, do I see myself here five years from now? Right. If the answer is no, find a way out. Right. And it's just like if the answer is yes, then stay. Yeah. And it's just like same thing with like your own solopreneur life. Like mm -hmm. if you're grinding and it's just like you're enjoying the process. Can you see yourself here five years from now? Mm -hmm. If the answer is yes, keep going. Right. If the answer is no, settle and get a job. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's as easy as that. And it's right. just like, that's a way to like test yourself because you have to be honest with yourself. Yeah. And it's like, you're the only 
the, the only person that can make the decision for yourself is like, do I want to go this way or do I want to go that way? Mm -hmm. And it's just like everyone has their own decision. Everyone has their own life path. And it's just like it's not to say one person is better than the other. It's just two different directions. It's left versus right. And you can typically feel when there's a mismatch in where you're going and where you want to be going. Definitely. And that's not a fun place to live. And it's just like, I feel like that's maybe what our goal has always been. It's just like, I don't want to live in that like one foot, one foot out kind of space where it's like, mm. you know, it's like that's for as much shit as I have to put deck like, deal with, I would never trade it for anything, you know? Yeah. I think it's like, yeah. fuck, dude, this is, yeah. That's pretty it. Pretty awesome. <laughs> I, I, I love the way you put it where it's almost like dipping your toe in one and then like half, half assing it in the other. Right. Um, where it's just like, if you do that, it's like you really, limit yourself on both sides because it's just like you're not confident enough to like build connections but then at the same time you're like worried that like you're not going to make enough money yeah so it's just like it's well you gotta cycle. fucking pick one <laughs> it's yeah like, it's tough it's like you gotta go all in so that way it's like you're worried about not making enough money but you're making connections or mm. you're making enough money but you're not making any connections right so it's just like those are the it's like it, you got to pick one. You can't mm -hmm. just like half-ass it um, if you're going to really do it totally. on a professional level. And I mean, I guess there's there's certain ways that you can like manage two lives in that way where it's just like, for instance, like, um, like I know people like uh, my homie Marcus, mm -hmm. perfect example. So he does music like three, four days out of the week mm -hmm. and they have, you know, 350,000 plus monthly listeners and they're like out here doing the damn thing as an actual functioning band, releasing tracks every month, um, sometimes two a month. I saw that one. But he it's was just, on the podcast. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, but he works a full-time job. Okay. So he like works full-time, but then schedules it in to like make sure like he makes time for like the business the right. music business right so it's just like he's handling both and he's balancing both but there always is sacrifice totally so there there is time that he doesn't have for much else mm -hmm. so it's literally like with him it's like his full-time job the music and then his girl right and that's it yeah so he really doesn't have much time for anything else and if he does it's just like one Sunday morning football day with like the guys, like right. that type of deal, like mm -hmm. once a week type, just for a few hours. But it's just like six out of seven days, he's like pretty booked up. And because yeah. he has like, he wants to make it and he doesn't want to give up on his dreams, but he also n understands that like he needs that engine to keep running. So he needs the money from mm -hmm. the full time job. But it's just like, again, it takes a certain type of person to do that because totally. it, not everyone is built for that type of life. No. Because that's it, it takes a lot and it's, right. it takes a lot of time that like you might want to spend more time hanging out with your friends, going out more often, doing things that are, you know, more fun and like not necessarily being super homebody. But like it's like if you have dreams, like you got to sacrifice. So it's just and like, that what? Yeah, that's and it. Totally, bro. I love that you said it like that. And, and I think to add to what you're saying, I think what that communicates to me is a certain like a uh, maturity and I think B more importantly is patience because I think like he could just be like fuck this I'm not gonna work full-time I'm going full-time music and it, I could make it happen in two years or whatever or I could give myself some fucking peace have a job sacrifice right some time with friends and stuff like that but have money to fuel my career and still know this is going to work out maybe six or seven instead of two or three yeah. and I think that that's a big thing I've had to learn is patience I'm not a very patient person you know and uh just like having that, like, okay, I know that it's going to be where I want to be in six or seven, eight years. Like, that's just what I heard from your story. I was like, dang, he kind of, like, he knows. He's like, it's going to work out. It's just a matter of time. Exactly. But he needs money, right? Like, we all need money to survive. Um, that's cool, bro. I respect, I respect, I listen to a little bit of that, but I respect that move a lot. You know, like, maybe you get one less three or you get one day a week with the boys. You get like three day, less days a week with the boys. You have to do X, Y, and Z, but you still have this vision of like, all right, dude. 20 30 from selling out the fucking van beer or mesa amp or whatever you know what i'm saying like yeah i, I think it's cool yeah really man. cool and and it's kind of like uh where like and i guess uh bringing that up was kind of just talking about how you can do both right where it's just like because we were talking about like the fork was just like one or the other it's totally. like understand that there is always a, a balance but like that that's a whole nother person like you have to be a different type of person to like do both and like uh have like be good at both you know what i'm saying to like be able to put 
like 100% energy into both avenues. And that's the thing where it's just like, um, like, like figure out what you want to put your energy into. And like, if you, if you want to like be a entrepreneur, but like you need money, like, put your energy into both so that way you can fuel your your fire and you know sometimes it does take people like taking that leap of faith and like jumping into it and like kind of like how you did it in a way where it's like you didn't really move out to Denver with like fifty thousand dollars in your pocket you know no, what I'm saying? Dude, I didn't have I had like four grand in my account or something right stupid. like just enough to cover like two months worth of rent yeah it was barely a dumb you know? move but but <laughs> but it ended up like working out you know what I mean <laughs> It ended up working out. And yeah. sometimes like that for you, that was what happened. And that was your story. And that's like, sometimes that's how it happens. Like yeah. that's not going to happen like that for a lot of people. A lot of people that, that doing that scares the shit out of them. Like putting themselves in that position. Fires me up. Right. It's so funny. <laughs> Freaks you're, me out when it fires me up. But also like, thank you're a different breed. Thank God or whatever you believe in. Like, I don't like, you know, acknowledge, I don't I'm like Christian or anything, but I acknowledge there's like some kind of God, something going on here. Spirit. <laughs> Something there's, happened in yeah. there. <laughs> there's something in the air. Yeah, some some in the air for sure. Um, what's the with the uh, just Texas accent? Just a go to, so easy. Anyways, um, yeah, dude. Again, I forgot what we were talking about. <laughs> I can't. Whoa, Benjamin Franklin just sneaking up on me. I'm surprised it didn't happen more. What were we just talking about? Fuck, dude. Um, we were talking. <laughs> oh, doing it, making it happen. <laughs> Don't smoke weed. Doing kids. it, making it happen. <laughs> Uh, it, we were just kind of talking about like the Colorado move where it's just yeah, like, uh, yeah. like you threw yourself out there and it was just kind of like, like it could have fucking like, like you were uh, like throwing yourself into a fire. Totally. Um, yeah. Sometimes it happens like that. But the fire. Yeah. I gotta stay away from the fire. <laughs> from the fire for sure. <laughs> Hopefully you can cut around that. Fuck dude. Like this guy is a piece of shit, dude. <laughs> People Jeez. are like, damn, how much did these guys smoke? Yeah, this before? guy just keyed out of his mind. What's going on with this guy? Oh my god. No, I, I, you know, uh, sometimes it happens. I just start like try try and pay attention to what we're talking about, and I just try and like not think about what I'm going to say next. Yeah, you know, and totally. then I just forget. I'm like, oh man, I'm so deep in this listening. I <laughs> shit, I forgot. Yeah, I, I forgot what to... I was listening to. <laughs> Go, damn, fucking side effects of weed. <laughs> It's, oops it's like having thoughts about having thoughts yeah damn it this <laughs> like is getting shit. way too meta bro <laughs> oh my face <laughs> ah this happens every time all right we're uh we're doing really good on time cool so, yeah um, keep it cruising i'm down to keep chatting whatever so we uh we talked about how like you went out to um to colorado without any clients and you didn't necessarily have like any like group of friends like you had right. a couple of people that you knew out there thankfully yeah um that was able to kind of be like a, a little bit of like a friend group in a way but um reason why i bring it up is because i want to talk about the now that you own your own company stay bin mm -hmm. stay bin films and you run that as like a multiple person operation yeah um so you you have to hire people and yeah you know building that team and we've talked about this off air um, how important it is to almost start delegating tasks uh, yeah. for things that you're not as like, uh, and even if you are versed in it, bringing people that are like specialized in mm -hmm. those things to like excel at it to make right. sure they can deliver at the highest level. And then you can focus like more so on like either directing or like being like doing what you do best. Totally. Um, so can you just speak on that and like when like... Um, when you started realizing that in this space, because I feel like it's that's something very big, like the difference between a five person shoot and like a one man shoot, mm -hmm. the perception of value is also totally. a lot higher as well. Totally, great question. Um, so I'll just kind of take you through what I think is the best way to answer this. I think it just the basis of all this is budgets and money. So initially kind of how you get started in this space is you are what's called a one man band, right? So literally you show up, with the lights, with the camera, with the audio, and you just do everything. And you get paid anywhere from three to a thousand dollars, three hundred dollars to a thousand dollars, maybe a little more, depending on what kind of clients you're working with. And then you start to take the next jump up to like twenty five hundred and you can delegate one of the roles on set, right? And so it just comes down to having budgets and being able to hire people. So then eventually, yeah, you get to this place where it's like, cool, I can have a three to four person crew. I can have more people on set to cover more positions so that we can elevate the overall product. Yeah. right why are there a hundred people on a set it's because 
every single job has to be done 10 out of 10 in order to make something that doesn't suck. It's really hard to make shit that doesn't suck, you know? Especially in film, bro. It's like, I didn't realize how difficult it was until I, tried, until I started trying to do it. So, yeah, man. I mean, now, like, I work with really closely with uh, this gentleman, Mitch. Uh, <laughs> my homie, Mitch. This gentleman, Mitch. <laughs> this <laughs> gentleman. Uh, I went to Haiti with Mitch, actually. So, about six years ago, I did a documentary in Haiti, and I was a DP. Mitch was the sound guy, and he was one of the guys I knew going out there. And so, we've started working together super closely and uh, he helps me with a lot of that kind of like back end stuff. It's just like delegating certain tasks. I have a girl who does copywriting and I have a girl who does like biz dev, just kind of manages LinkedIn. And it's great, dude. I mean, it, it's kind of a trip to say it, you know, um, but like, it's cool. I got people that I'm paying and I'm helping them. You know, it's cool to be able to provide for like for people to do what they want to. And it's just, it's the only way to be able to do shit and just grow right like you can only have you only have so much bandwidth that you can do as a human being yeah and so having a people having a team of people enables you to do more you yeah, know for sure and it allows you to scale the business yeah and and that's essential to scaling a business is delegation right. of tasks right and it's just like you never see a company that is one person that no, is dude. making millions of dollars. It's impossible, bro. It's it's actually impossible. Well, I was literally thinking about it last night too, man, because I'm, I'm in this position where, you know, just trying to figure out like, all right, bringing in people officially partnered in the business, like where can I go? How high can I go? And where, who do I need to go there? And you only have, again, we only have so much bandwidth and energy as, as human beings. Like I thought when I was younger, I could do everything, have these endless to-do lists and just be on all the time. But it's just not the reality, dude. Like we right. have limited energy and resources. And so- like you're saying, enabling people and empowering people <clears throat> to help you allows you to go further, you know? And like maybe by myself in this business, if I had like a team of contractors, I could get to like anywhere from three to 500K a month in, or a year in revenue. A month would be crazy. Holy shit. But yeah. And that's, and that's just, that's if I don't want to pay the price of making more money. I, had, I paid a gentleman for some consulting. This guy was a gentleman. He's an older dude who <laughs> sold his business, you know? gentlemen Definitely and uh <laughs> yeah bro you fucking this dude's an absolute gangster like built a really successful media company had a really successful exit and one thing he told me that stuck with me was really interesting he was like you don't do you think the guy that's making 20 million a year isn't uh paying the price so to speak in some capacity for making that amount of money whether it's time relationships like you just don't make that kind of money right and so he was like you can kind of ruin your own life if you're not really clear on what you want and how you want to get there yeah. And that kind of just put things into perspective for me as well. And like, okay, you know, I don't want a hundred employees. You know, I, I want to have a team of people that is small and that I trust and that I can empower and we can all make fucking great money. Um, but I, I don't want to like, just think about work either. I, I like just hanging out and hiking and snowboarding and fishing and doing all this stuff, you know? Um, so yeah, that's kind of just a roundabout answer, but. You know? Yeah, I mean, well, it's just like the importance of like having that team and it's like you're the, what you're talking about at the end there is almost like the team that you want to have around you and like you kind of defining what that looks like for you. Totally. Where it's just like you don't want to have a hundred employees no. um, and have, you know, uh, like at least right now that it, it, it's not where you want or you see yourself going at all. And it's just like being able to manage a team where like you guys can hang out and kind of be friends at the same time. Yeah. And like, it's also people that you enjoy working with. Totally. Like that's, that's how you build a team. And that's mm -hmm. how you build like a, that syner synergy, like among team members, uh, where it's just like working together for the same goal, hundred percent. but like all playing your part type of deal. And mm -hmm. I, I like that you brought up like the, uh, like a movie set, because like when you look at the credits, hundreds of names, dude, it's insane. And it's just like people that are on this side, you know, like the, uh, the consumers, of the content, mm -hmm. they don't understand how much really goes into it on like a feature film uh, oh my God. level. Yeah. But even on like a just regular, like a shoot that involves like multicam, lighting, audio, talent, oh, yeah. like multi-day shoots, like these productions require 
a team of yeah, people totally. and it's just like they they all are there for a reason like you said we're like they're all um there to to perform their task to be to make it the best 10 out of 10 product that it could be which is kind of like like i said kind of like working towards the same goal of having the best possible video outcome that you can 100 percent. um but it's like so it's like anybody and i think that goes without saying um for any creative industry mm -hmm. like i think um, there's there's some obviously exceptions where like you're the only one doing the work so therefore like there's hard to like build a team like for mm -hmm. instance like a graphic designer right like you can have apprentices and like bring people on but like they're never gonna be like you right whereas like in like a video you can be well versed in the the lighting the audio the video the directing the every the the whole everything but then like you're best at like directing so you're going to take the director's chair mm -hmm. and it's like even though you can do everything mm -hmm. and it's kind of like i relate that to like music directly where it's just like the the recording artist that also produces himself that also records right. himself that also mixes and masters and totally that um when these artists end up becoming big artists the first thing they do is get people on their team and it's like the first thing they do is get other producers in the room. The mm -hmm. first thing they do is get like PR and, and uh, advertising management and stuff like that, where it's like people that are helping the machine of the artist. So it's almost like thinking about it like that, where it's just like, like Post Malone, yeah, he started writing his own songs with a guitar and like, yeah, he was like maybe producing his own stuff just because he could and like using his homies, just like all self-produced stuff. But as soon as he got signed, they were like they had producers in his head they had like there was like all these people that they built the team around him to to make it into the machine of post malone that he mm -hmm. is today right so it's just there's like, only yeah. so much you can do bro and that's yeah. like i think one of the most just it keeps coming to my head and just like over and over again in different ways like you know just this idea of all right i want to live the perfect day what does the perfect day even look like how much energy is really available to me like and 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 also i heard something recently too where it was like just letting yourself be at peace and understanding like how much energy you have how much you can do and then feeling good about what you've done yeah. you know and at the end of the day it's like bro there's you can only get this much done but if you have five people working with you then you can five x what you're doing you know um but yeah dude 100 percent post malone I, I don't know if you watch kill tony but <clears throat> he was on there recently. Yeah. yeah, I saw I saw the the thumbnail. I gotta watch it though. He's the fucking man. Yeah. I He's just him. the chillest dude ever, bro. Yeah. Like just so nice to everybody. And just, I mean, homie chain smokes cigarettes for but, sure. Um just the nicest dude. You can tell he's just like a total chill guy to hang out with. And I was like really I don't know. I just had I like that episode a lot. For sure, dude. Really I funny. I love Post Maloney. I watched his uh, <clears throat> a little bit of his Joe Rogan interview. It was like three hours long. I didn't watch all of it. The one he just did. The one that he just did recently. Okay. Yeah, because um, they after the together album. they went to kill Tony. Right after. Yeah. And then that episode dropped like two weeks after. I gotta yeah, watch the, like the Joe Rogan. Was it good with him? It was great. Yeah, yeah. it was really, really good. Um yeah, I mean Post Malone is just like a genuine dude. Like you're saying, totally. like, you could just tell like he would be a homie, dude. Just like super just fun so to hang cool. out with, have a beer yeah. with. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I watched him on um uh Steve O's Wild Ride. Okay. I love that podcast. Oh, I didn't way. know that. He's yeah. A, okay. So uh Steve O has a podcast called Wild Ride okay. where he basically has like a um like a tour bus and he tricked it out to like be like a podcast studio. That's cool. So it's like a mobile podcast studio that he Shit. just like pulls up to places and stuff and people pull up to him and stuff. But anyways, he had Post Malone on and uh so that was that was pretty cool nice um, dude that he was able to like uh and they like went into the house and like hung out after and shit nice and like man that's so cool they like shot beer cans and whatever i like, love it yeah dude it's like man but yeah it's like stories like that but like it's, it's inspiring to see but it's also like back to that like the team building thing where it's just like you need the team like you need the team if you want the machine like, yeah that's it which a great point it's like I like that um yeah because you only have so much you could do by yourself but straight up yeah dude i mean you've taken it so far like you, you took it as far as you could go by yourself and now you've taken it even farther with the addition of these these select few people that mm -hmm. that you now work with on multiple things mm -hmm. and it's like you're not just hiring them for like a one-off type right. deal you know it's like that's that's when you really start building like the community within the company i guess totally where it's just like um you like uh you really start to like build together like mm -hmm. you can see their progression within the company as well as like the company as a whole. 
totally man but yeah uh, it's a real blessing to just be able to have people that are down to help and i don't know just keep learning bro there's so much to learn jesus christ yeah man but it's like i mean i've talked about this with a couple people where it's like the best creators and the 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 top people of the world like never stop learning 100 percent. and they'll like they'll always try to seek new ways to innovate and they'll always try to like learn from people that are doing it better than them yep um because there's always someone doing it better than you i feel mm -hmm. like there's like always like in any space there's always someone to draw inspiration from yep um i mean unless you are joe rogan running a podcast it's just like you are the podcast guy right <laughs> so it's just, but it's just like like, yeah, just kind of related to like even starting this, you know, mm -hmm. it's like being able to like see other people and like take inspiration from them and uh, straight up. Yeah. Dude. So a lot of the work that you do with Stay Bien is like corporate uh, type of work mm -hmm. and like marketing material for like social media and like direct digital marketing like that. Mm -hmm. um, do you, though, see yourself transitioning into somewhat of a um, short film or feature mm -hmm. film type of world? Yeah, man, 100%. Uh, I'm in that space because it's, I, you have to make a living, right? Like I'd love to be getting paid to make shorts and more like narrative branded stuff, but there's not a bunch of money that's just available doing that stuff. So 100%, I'd say like, you know, 10, 15 year goal would be to have like a really successful production company that's kind of just cash flowing and running and I can direct the spots and the things I want to direct and then use some of that money to fund shorts and to fund yeah. other things. and then also just have more time to go after projects that I want to go after because ultimately things just take time, you know? And like, if you want to connect with the marketing manager of some successful company, like it doesn't happen overnight or off an email, you know, it's like lunches and phone calls and things that take time. And so 100% to answer your question, I'd love to have eventually, you know, write some shorts, produce some short films, eventually get into producing a feature, but all in due time. You know, like that's just something that like I know I'll get to eventually. And uh, I'm, I'm going to start with the short this fall for sure. Nice. But it's also like, you know, kind of sometimes it can become the shiny object where it's like you think you're being productive and you're working on this thing. Like oh, I'm, I'm making this feature, but it's like, are you making any money, dude? Are you like surviving or are you just distracting yourself from doing the things you should be doing? You yeah. Know? Um, which I'm guilty of sometimes. And yeah, to answer your question, 100 percent. I can't wait to get into that eventually so um you said you're getting into one in the fall so you already kind of had the idea you already like you yeah. wrote did you write it yeah so i had a script i wrote um i think i sent it to friend zone a oh while ago. yeah that yeah. was like years ago yeah now. three years ago you know i had this like kind of random i don't know if it was like an open relationship just like a, i got friend zone hard yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> By this girl. wrote the script and uh yeah. <laughs> she's alive relationship is dead <laughs> here lies esteban Obregon. <laughs> no, no. no i mean it, it's a it's a funny ass script you know about getting friend zoned and uh i wrote it in phoenix i wrote it at the island that's kind of where the context or i guess where it took place like uh yeah. in, in this in time and space mm -hmm. so i, I kind of want to rewrite that and to have it take place in denver so it just makes sense and i can film it there denver dude is like the most aesthetic fucking city to film sure. in oh my god Beautiful. um I sent it to one of my friends that I met recently, Jill. Shout out Jill, 140 Films. <laughs> and dude, she gave me the nicest compliment of all time, bro. She was like, this is kind of like Dave. Oh, uh, hell yeah. And I was like, she passed out, you know? Yeah. I love that show. I mean, I yeah. think that show is like the pinnacle in terms of writing, the way it's shot. Hiro Murai is the guy who did Atlanta. He's one of the EPs, executive producers on there. Oh, wrong. Bro, it's like a really, it's shot really well in terms of just the, the contrast. Typically, you don't see uh, comedies shot in that way. Yeah. But when I heard that, I was like, okay. Because you just don't know if the shit you're making like sucks sometimes. You're like, is this just absolute garbage? You know, like most people won't tell you like, you know, that's not good, bud. <laughs> like, get back to the, they'll be like, yeah, dude, fucking just gas you up. Yeah. So it was nice to he get a little bit of validation and just be like, oh, okay. This, you know, doesn't really suck. She didn't mention anything about the other script I sent her. So I figure, <laughs> I figure that that's her way of saying Get back to the drawing board on that yeah, one. Yeah, on that one. Yeah, but, <laughs> no comment. <laughs> yeah. Yo, but yeah. That that's sweet. That's sweet though, man. You're getting already like your your feet wet in that space. Trying um, to. I feel like that's like because I, I could definitely see you in that world. Like uh once the money is right, obviously, like because yeah, I mean that makes sense doing corporate gigs because that's what's paying the bills. It's and like, it's cool, man. It's a cool opportunity to take something that's like more mundane, you know, like oral surgery, dentistry, things that are like on the surface aren't as appealing. 
and like make them look cool and yeah. extract these great stories, stories out of them. Yeah, 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 yeah just yeah. like give it a new spin so it's not just so generic and tacky. You know, yeah. it's like cool. Let's make this stuff look badass. You know, yeah, it's like although you have to do it to like make pay the bills, like do it like with the same passion that yeah. you would if you were doing like a passion project 100%. in a way. I think that's a good way to put it. And totally. um, yeah, I, th I think that's like a, like still there's so many ways you can tell those stories in like engaging ways like that one Elevate Dental uh, yeah. commercial that you did. That was one where I felt like when I saw that, like I remember like when you sent that to me as like a, hey, like just made this like, yeah. check this out, let me know what you think. Life gets busy, but work should feel easy. That's why Elevate Dental is focused on giving your practice the support and autonomy you deserve. Our customized approach allows you to get back to doing what you love and above all, find balance again. Like I remember watching, I was like, dude, what? <laughs> like I remember thinking like, this is like a turned corner right here, dude. Oh yeah, thank you, man. Of course, like when I saw that, I was like, okay, this is like the direction for like corporate marketing. Like if right. you're gonna do it, like do it like that. Where it right. almost like, there was even like the transition and like the music and like yeah. the energy shift where it almost felt like a, like a two and a half minute fucking mini short. Right. Where it's like, you almost like got attached to like the, the protagonist, the yeah. guy, you know, like you felt for him, you yeah. know what I mean? And that was <laughs> like funny, such, dude. such a weird, like a, uh, such a weird thing to like take away from such a short clip, but like that's like the power of story. That's yeah, just in film. advertising, bro. Yeah, you gotta feel it. Yeah, you know, you, you show them, you don't tell them. Yeah, and exactly, know? and I think it's like it's 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 not only in advertising but in filmmaking. Oh, totally. And yeah, it's just 100%. like I'm just, just like just, capitalism. Yeah, <laughs> advertising. <laughs> but it's Jeez. like in filmmaking, like yeah. the, the art behind the uh, the, the work. <laughs> totally. Like, that's like that's what like draws me in you yeah, know what i'm bro. saying because like i'm not necessarily like gonna buy their services off of it <laughs> but sure? i was moved by the story you know yeah, what i no, mean just 100%. by seeing it so it's just, like that's awesome dude absolutely bro so it's like it's cool like to be able to like infuse like that talent of yours like to be able to write story and like create that visual like um uh i guess like emotion in a way um but like like you said to kind of like attach it to like a mundane thing that like dentistry you know right. like you wouldn't think like a dentist office would have like a commercial that would like pull at your heartstrings you we're know? trying dude it's like bro funny enough about that commercial actually um great learning experience you know just like awesome I'm, I'm glad you liked it you know i feel like now looking back there's a number of things i would have done differently obviously we you know you make it whatever um but bro i wrote that commercial and <laughs> literally probably wrote a three minute commercial <laughs> and it was supposed to be like 45 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so I get into the cutting room and I'm like, wow, <laughs> we fucked up. This is not going to fit into a minute. It was, that was a short film that I wrote straight up. It yeah. was like this guy comes home and his wife and his whole conversation. And I get into the edit room. I'm like, this is, what was I thinking, so bro? You had to scale it back quite a bit. Well, then. dude, 60 seconds, bro, is not yeah. like realistically. I mean, you're talking about if you have two second cuts, I mean, that's 30 clips. That's two seconds cuts. It's a lot of clips, but you you really, every single clip has to like add to the story. It's like got to be super intentional. It's like, you know, there's even with a feature, every word counts, right? But more so obviously in a 30 or a 60 second spot. Yeah. So it was just a great uh, lesson in like writing things like that. And yeah, you're just like, dang, actually it has to be like punching quick and just like you're, there's not room for the, for the meat of it, so to speak. Yeah. It's just like, like you said, it's what's the feeling, you know, like you got to convey that with as little amount of shit as possible, you know? It's so cool how like sometimes in like creative stuff, like when you're given restrictions, your creativity opens up new doors. Right. Versus if you were given like 
unlimited time. Right. You write a three minute short, but then like when you're given like, oh, it has to be 60 seconds. Right. You're like, oh shit, well then now I gotta like trim the fat. And then, right. then it uh, like forces you to become more creative. Right. And, like, well, I thought it was gonna be 60. I wrote it thinking it was gonna be 60, but I was like, okay. Oh, so, okay. So <laughs> well, you, I just had this whole idea. Yeah, so <laughs> there's just too much off. story going yeah, on. Okay. Got too but carried away. But you still like, it's cool like how like after the fact, like you were like forced to like buy the restrictions of the time yes, totally. to like figure out like how it how you could still convey the story yeah, in that time totally. frame 100 percent. um so it's it's cool how like sometimes like restrictions are a good thing in a way where it, like it because had it been a three minute commercial and you would have like made it three minutes it would not have been as engaging oh, no. i would have turned it off it wouldn't exactly you would have <laughs> yeah. turned it off 15 seconds in yeah because it wouldn't have hit fast enough yeah. and it's just like it's kind of like tailoring it to like make sense and like yeah. uh fit the fit the fit like the i guess what you're trying to accomplish like totally. the end goal um but it's cool how like it almost takes like boxing yourself in to like come up with the best thing yeah man um, i love that i think that's a really cool point i feel like that gets like creative wisdom creative maturity you know and i feel like that's what pre-production is right it's like you have this roadmap that you think is going to be best but like you're saying once you have like kind of this restriction or this box you've kind of created then it frees your mind to be like, okay, I can think about all these other things, right? Or I can, because I know this is what I, it's funny how that works, but I love that, that like perspective you shared. It's cool. Yeah, man. And yeah, it's like, um, like with, with anything, it's like, uh, like even back in the day, like to kind of relate it back to music again, um, like back in the day when they were shoot or when they were recording in analog studios, they only had eight, 16, 32 track channels. So you can only use 8, 16, 32 different instruments, including vocals. Mm -hmm. So it's just like when you have that limit, right? like yeah. the, the mixes end up being better because there's less going on. So you can separate thing more, more. You can worry, like you can fine tune things a little bit more, be a little bit more intentional with EQ and stuff like that. And that's why like some of the best records of all time were made on analog systems because they were given restrictions totally. and they had to make sure the story and the songwriting was on point because they couldn't fluff it up with 32 tracks of synthesizers totally uh, everything had a place everything was intentional everything yeah. if it didn't add to it then why, it why is it here yeah it wasn't you in know? there because it was just taking up space on the mixer that's cool that's a really cool perspective yeah it's crazy when you think about that because sometimes you do want that like limitless just i don't want creative bounds but like kind of need somewhere to think inside of you know yeah I think that's it you know you want to be ethereal and be able to pull from whatever but 100 percent, i like that it's cool yeah it's kind of like giving yourself the restriction will allow you to like force yourself to like think of things in new ways that like if you would have uh um if you would have not had that restriction then you might have gone in like the wrong direction completely versus like totally yeah it kind of just sends you in the right direction like sets up guidelines i guess in a way but um i love that yeah, man. So I guess to uh, to wrap up here, bro. Like, what's uh, what's what's next for Stay Bien? Do you have any exciting projects coming out soon that you're working on now, or like, what's I know you're editing all the time. I mean, yeah. what's, what you got going on, or what can we bring attention to? Um, dude, I mean, what's next for us? I think it's just keeping doing what we're doing and just trying to get like actual systems going, bro. I think I'm definitely getting I actually hired, not hired, but I have two editors that I interviewed recently, and that's gonna be great. It's gonna help us get to that next kind of scaling point, so to speak. But bro, it's just like keeping it going, just staying yeah. the course. I think like <clears throat> it's hard to say just like, I'm just going to keep doing the same thing, but that's just what I'm going to keep doing. You know, I think like I'm, I'm going to keep getting better as a person and learning more, but for stay bien, it's like, dude, there's a fit in the market for the product. People are buying it um, and things are going well. So it's just like, dude, just keep doing this. Yeah. Um, but man, appreciate you having me on, bro. This was epic. Absolutely, Super no, epic, for dude. sure, man. And it's like uh, to, to to touch on that. It's like you're you're going, you're, you're doing things in the same way, but it's not like you're doing this. You're doing this, right? So it's just like a roller coaster. You know, just what the I mean? boring work, bro. That's what it yeah. gets, gets. It. I mean, not boring, but you just you show up every day for ten years, yeah, dude. bro. You got a fucking skyscraper. You're grinding. You know? You're grinding right now, bro. And I feel like next year because of the energy and effort that you're putting in right now the systems that you're putting in place you're going to be in a completely different place totally. and it's just like you might like feel like like oh man like these are the like the big big projects like we're doing now because of like like because right now we're kind of still like in the 
trying to just make things happen. We're just going to keep going. We're going to keep on these, on this way that we're going. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of where your energy's at. Just like, mm-hmm. oh, we're just going to keep it going. You know what I mean? Where we're mm-hmm. at right now is cool. We just keep going, keep right. building. Where it's just like, when you get to like later on, you're just going to be like, be able to be like four or five years in advance. Totally. Just like, see like, I'm involved with this project. I'm involved with this project. Like my 100%. team's working on this. It's like, have all these things going on. But right now you're just, you're still building, bro. But it's just like, you're doing it though. And that's, that's the big thing. So Slow and steady, bro. Yeah, bro. hundred percent. I, I appreciate you coming on, man. Your story is amazing. Uh, I hope people got inspiration from this. I mean, this is someone that's actually out here doing it, man. It's like, just, and, and he's still young, man. It's like, you're, you're 30. I'm only 45 years old, actually. <laughs> Actually, I'm only 67. <laughs> Look how good I look. Smoked cigarettes for 48 years. Cubans. No, I'm, I'm 30. <laughs> I'm 30. <laughs> Cubans have the best skin of all yeah. time. Um, yeah, but it's just like being 30 and having the mindset that you have and the energy that you have and the drives and passion that you have, I feel like you're set up for success. And Appreciate you, man. 100%, dude. And I, there's not a doubt in my mind, you know, we're going to be having these conversations when like, we're on a yacht some t- someday Bro. somewhere in fucking Italy. The you big know joke I, mean? I make with with <laughs> uh, with my friend Robbie is exactly what you said. Just like keep working hard and just don't die. You know, yeah. just like, just fucking do your best to not die, to not get behind the wheel of your car when you've had six beers. Yes, that we don't condone that on on Mars. We do not. We definitely <laughs> do not. And don't get behind the wheel that. of your car with your homie. There's fucking Ubers. But you know what yeah. I'm saying? It's just like if we stay alive, and there's no reason we shouldn't. Right? I'm not being like a but. 100% bro we're just on a yacht I want some lobster yeah on a yacht <laughs> you're just like all right well what else dude you're just bored you're like yeah right, exactly, well, exactly. <laughs> this fucking let me, sucks. let me check my account again yeah. this sucks ah, still rich <laughs> yeah still rich <laughs> all right Thank you so much for coming on, man. This has course, been an amazing, bro. amazing conversation. Uh, Martians, go follow Esteban online. It's at E-S-T-E underscore S-L-S. And then also follow his company, Stay Bien. It's Stay B-I-E-N Films. Um, that's at Stay Bien Films on Instagram. And then StayBienFilms.com. Is that yep. correct? Mm-hmm. So yeah, hit him up. Um, I mean, if you're in Denver and you need local video work, by all means, Hit him up because or if he, you're trying to party, yeah, I'm just if you're trying to party, <laughs> hit him up. But, uh, no, 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 hit me I mean, up if you're trying to party. I don't party like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that. This dude works. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I mean, just hit him up. I mean, like his stuff, support this man. Um, go look at his stuff, and uh, yeah, if you need any other work, obviously you know, reach out. But um, but yeah, no, appreciate you guys watching. Love you guys so much. We'll see you guys next time on Mars. Love you. Peace. Oh yeah, bro. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in and watching this episode of the On Mars Pod and for sticking around to the end, man. I really appreciate you guys. You are the real Martians. Like this video, comment below what your favorite part was, what was most inspiring to you. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell for notifications here on future interviews coming out soon. And also follow us on Instagram at On Mars Pod. Love you guys so much. We will see you next time on Mars. Get a mouth breather on here. <laughs> just, oh, Can I, am I allowed to hit this pen on air? Yeah, man, I'll, I'll cut around it, but yeah, fuck yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, for sure. I'll, uh, I gotta look at these notes real quick, see where we're at, dude. What is that? Uh, what are you smoking on there? I don't even know. Nice. A little bit of fent. <laughs> a little bit of fent. <laughs> Jesus. A little bit All of right. PCP. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, let's Sorry. I just, just... Had to get a little lubed up. Good stuff, dude. Hell yeah, that was epic, dude. Was Let's fun. go. <laughs> How long did we do it for? Uh...